Stamped metal ceilings designed to emulate European carved and molded plasterwork became very popular near the end of the 19th century. That's when this 200-year-old colonial home was getting a new dining room. Alice Pulliam, the owner of the house, has decided a metal ceiling would be a perfect addition to this room. It's one of the original homes in the town of Monroe. It was built in 1790. Um, and we're actually standing in the addition that was put in, I believe it was about 1820, 1840. The first step is to remove most of the furniture and decorative objects from the room and put down floor protection. This product is made just for that purpose. This is most definitely a two-person project, and today Brian Terrell will be giving me a hand. The ceiling tiles are two feet square. We need to lay them out so that the partial border tiles around the perimeter of the room are equal width on opposite walls. I've done this with a scale drawing, but we confirm the measurements on the actual ceiling. To determine our starting point, we measure down the width of the border tile plus the width of several full tiles on one wall and make a mark. Then do the same on the opposite wall. We connect these marks by striking a chalk line across the ceiling. This process is repeated on the remaining two walls. The intersection of these two lines will be the point where we'll begin our installation. The metal tiles will be attached to one by three furring strips that must be installed perpendicular to the ceiling joists. Our next job is to locate those joists. In this case, a stud finder set in deep scan mode does the trick. A magnet can also be used to locate joists by detecting screws or nails beneath the surface. This version makes a popping sound when it senses metal. As a last resort, a series of small holes can be drilled until the bit encounters solid wood. A tape measure placed on the first joint will often reveal the location of others at 16 or 24 inch intervals. The joist locations are marked on the ceiling near the walls, then connected by stretching a chalk line between them and snapping a line. We repeat this at one foot intervals. We begin by installing furring strips around the perimeter of the room. Then put one every 12 inches across the ceiling, screwing them into the joist we located and marked earlier. The furring strips have two purposes, to provide a secure nailing surface around the perimeter of each tile and to allow us to correct any irregularities in the ceiling. And in this nearly 200-year-old room, we have some significant irregularities. The center of the ceiling dips nearly three inches. To flatten it out, we insert shims and blocks between the furring strips and the ceiling. We're using a laser level to establish a reference line. While it is possible to use strings to do this, if the ceiling is dramatically uneven, like this one, purchasing or renting a laser level is well worth the investment. Now most likely, your ceiling won't need anywhere near this much shimming. In fact, it may not need any at all. But this is a 150-year-old house, and the ceiling here has dropped three inches in the center. It's time to start putting up the tiles. These are the ceiling tiles that we're going to be using. They're embossed solid copper, chemically treated to have a patina that gives them a pleasing aged look. Okay. All set? Uh -huh. We re-strike our intersecting lines on top of the furring strips. Position the corner of the first tile on the cross mark and nail it up. Okay. 
These cone head nails are copper coated and designed especially for metal ceilings. The tiles are intended to overlap and conceal the joints. Some of the edges, though, will remain exposed, orienting the exposed edges so they face away from a room's main doorway will make them less noticeable. Restriking our chalk lines every two feet will give us an alignment guide as we work our way across the room. It's important to align the overlapping edges of adjacent tiles while at the same time making sure the outside edges line up with the guidelines. This is definitely a two-person job, with one person aligning and holding and the other nailing. In fact, at one point we added a third person to help hold the tiles in position using a makeshift support. What worked even better, though, were these spring-loaded poles typically used for dust barrier systems. Metal ceiling tiles, especially the cut edges, can be very sharp. Wearing gloves when working with this material is essential. Today, we're working from step ladders, although work platforms and rolling scaffolds can also be used. To cut the electrical box opening for the chandelier, we measure from the edges of the nearest tiles, copy those dimensions to a full tile, bore a starter hole, and cut the opening with a pair of snips. With the full tiles in place, it's time to deal with the partial tiles around the room's border. Here, we measure from the edge of the last full tile to the wall, transfer that measurement to a tile, draw a line, and cut using a pair of aviation snips. It's not necessary to be overly precise here, since the edges of the ceiling will be concealed behind cornice molding. This is the cornice molding that we'll be using around the perimeter of the ceiling. The cornice will add an impressive decorative touch to the room and conceal any gaps around the edge of the ceiling. It's designed to be installed on a diagonal between the ceiling and wall. In this case, the bottom edge of the cornice should be four and a half inches from the ceiling. We'll measure down that distance and mark the location with masking tape. The cornice sections overlap each other and are nailed into the perimeter furring strip on the ceiling and studs on the wall. Sections can be easily cut to length with aviation snips. Again, be sure to orient the overlap away from doors and entryways so that it's less visible. In general, it's usually best to deal with the corners first, and then the straight runs. This room has both inside corners and outside corners. They're handled a bit differently. Outside corners call for mitering, while inside corners can best be handled with a coped joint. Apply some masking tape to the face of the molding to help make markings more visible. For outside corners, mark the locations of the bottom and top edges on the wall and ceiling, either by drawing a line or using masking tape. Hold a section of cornice in position on the lines, letting it extend several inches beyond the corner. Mark the bottom edge where it intersects the corner and the top edge where it crosses the tape or line. Using a straight edge, connect both marks. Because of this molding's concave shape, it's necessary to tip the pen or pencil inward about 30 degrees. Then, using a pair of aviation snips, cut along the line. Do a test, then trim as necessary until the two sections fit tightly. 
The outside corner cuts can also be made using a compound miter saw fitted with a metal cutting blade. This type of joint requires a combination of a miter cut and a bevel cut, known as a compound miter. Putting the molding flat on the saw bed allows the cut to be made more cleanly and safely. In this case, we fabricated a jig to hold the workpiece securely in position. For inside corners, place masking tape on the ceiling and wall to mark the edges of the cornice. Align a piece of molding with the tape edges and slide it fully into the corner. Mark the cornice where it intersects the tape. Draw a line connecting the mark with the corner. And cut along the line with aviation snips. Slip the straight end of a molding section fully into the corner and nail it in place. Test fit and trim the cut section until it fits properly. This section can also be used as a template for other outside corners. An inside corner can also be cut on the compound miter saw using the same settings as for the outside corner. So what do you think? It is absolutely gorgeous. It really changes this room, doesn't it? It's a total trend. It's the room was just waiting for you to do this. It's unbelievable. So the section of the house we're in right now is 200 years old. At least, yes. And that <laughs> ceiling truly goes with that feeling.